So, I'm Hiko Simon, and this is Rochelle Karp from Japan Intercultural Consulting, and we are back with another exciting episode of How Not to Screw Up in Japan. And today's topic, which Rochelle has not been briefed on whatsoever, this is just another complete shocking topic, is uh, I'm, today I'm, I'm going to play bad expat. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something that I hear all the time, which is that culture is just a BS excuse for doing the wrong thing. Aha. Aha. Stay tuned. So, you know, when I'm trying to help, you know, resistant to uh, new ideas, uh, expat manager or whatever, you know, what I'm trying to help them understand the nuances of a situation so that they don't completely screw up. And I'll say, listen, you know, here you do have to go around and, and get everyone's buy-in before the meeting. You can't just attack someone in the meeting because no one's going to accept it. And they'll say, yeah, you know, that soft, namby-pamby kind of way. I know that's how things are done here, but I think that's why everything's been going wrong for so long. You know, what people need is some direction. I know, I know how this works. You know, this culture thing is just an excuse for all the stuff that's wrong here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Japanese, they make a big deal about culture, but we have lots of people from different countries where I'm from. It's just an excuse. Dismissive of the whole, whole idea, you know, or you take the opposite extreme of, you know, culture is just, a, they overdo. They, you know, it's cultural cliches. Everything right, is right, cultural right, right, yeah. cliches and... Uh, so I don't know, this whole, the, the, the relevance of culture to begin with, particularly, again, from, uh, I apologize for being Anglo-Saxon and, and from an English-speaking culture, we, we're kind of guilty. Uh, we're incredibly blessed that we're from a culture that's more or less been able to dominate a large part of the planet and that we speak a language, which is a terrible language. It makes no sense at all. It's no, no, it's just terrible to learn, right? Yeah. I, I, I apologize sincerely to all the, all the people in the world that have to learn our messed up language, but... Yeah. And, and, and I apologize for being so lucky that I was born in a country where I got to speak it as my own natural, know, native no, language exactly. by default. It's yeah. such an unfair advantage. It is, yeah. But dims, you know, dims are breaks. <laughs> so, but there is a tendency to dismiss the relevance of culture, particularly from, by, among people from English-speaking countries. Yes, I and, think so. And you sell cultural sensitivity more or less. Right, right. You must run into resistance about that whole idea, right? Um, You're definitely selling snake water. Do. You must get that sometimes. We definitely do. Those people tend to not become our clients. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, maybe they do down the road. Anyway. Yeah, after, after things are really bad. Well, yeah, when, yeah, when the fire department's left the building and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, help us pick up the pieces, please. We definitely get some of that. Yeah. yeah. But at that point, they're usually open to hearing about culture because they're so burned. I think that's the best situation to get them, actually. But yeah, I mean, it's always great to have people who are enlightened uh, right, in right, advance. Right. But there's nothing like a great disaster to, to teach people a good lesson. Sometimes <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but I don't. Is, but how much is culture really a thing? How much? I mean, aren't people just people? Don't well, people really just want the same thing? Well, they they do. Yeah. And the thing is, the and they have the same motivations, and they often try and reach the same objectives. It's just that the way they get there looks different. Mm. And so my objective may be to be polite to you and treat you really well. Mm. And in U.S. culture, the way I might do that is to be really honest and put everything on the table yeah. and let you know what's going on. Yeah. If I'm Japanese, the way I might try and be really uh, treat you well mm. is to not tell you things that I think you don't want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And I may just not answer your email if I, th if I think that you don't want to hear what I have to say. Right. Right. So it's, we're trying to do the same thing. It's just mm. the method we're using is going to be different based on culture. Yeah. Yeah. So you made a point, interesting point in an earlier uh, episode talking about productivity, for example. Mm -hmm. And there is this, people get off the plane in Japan and what the hell, not everyone here is not being very productive. Um, and that's something even uh, among young foreigners, I mean, again, a lot of people who watch this, they want to come and work in Japanese companies, and I've been through that. And I've been sitting there at 11 o'clock at night, um, more or less made clear to me that I'm in a hostage situation and I'm not <laughs> free to leave the building. And I'm like, why am I here? Right. What am I doing here? You know, is this any way to live or work? And, I'm, it, took me, and it took me a while to get my head around that. The, the natural instinct in those situations that I had and that certainly a lot of expats immediately say, if I'll mm -hmm. use the term, is just to call bullshit on the situation. <laughs> this is bullshit. You know, 
this is, I, we, we can all pretend to be understanding and whatever, but at some point you just have to call a spade a spade. And, but I don't know. So there is this whole, that's the retort to, to, to cultural sensitivity sometimes. Right. This is all just, you know, mumbo jumbo stuff. It seems, feels very fuzzy and, 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 and fluffy. So how do you explain to someone with very ingrained ideas that their way is the right way and they're here to change things or whatever and they're, from a, from a, they're here to impose a Western cultural perspective right. without consciously knowing that that's what they're doing? Right, right. How, how, do you, how do you help someone, done, or a Japanese person who's right. going to America to teach them how to be good kohais, you know, right, right. teach them how to be good, you know, dedicated to the company employees? Right. How do you help someone understand that they have to see a bit beyond their, their prism? Right. Which is all that they can see. Right, exactly. And so really, the way I like to do it is to try and work with whatever it is that they are already noticing. Yeah. So e usually even someone with that perspective has noticed some differences. Yeah. And maybe it's just things that annoy them. Yeah. But if you can start with something concrete, mm -hmm and then help them see, well, this is what might be behind it yeah. that would be different than what you might have in your culture. Yeah. And just kind of give them a glimpse yeah. into there's some stuff here that you're not familiar with. Yeah. You're probably going to want to learn about, right? Yeah. So it's really, I, I always try and start with the things that are actually going on for them or that they're noticing or caring about. Right, right. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can sort of see that. I guess and the most obvious thing there would maybe be language, for example, or something like that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Or, you know, why, why, are this, why is this person doing this thing? Or why did they react to me this way? Or why did this customer do that? So in a way, I mean, you sound almost like a, a psychotherapist at times. Like, I, that, that role must come up. Yeah, yeah, kind of. It, it definitely blends into, it's, it's, you know, it's some of the same skills in coaching. And, and it's really figuring out where they're at and kind of helping yeah. them move from there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're going to do probably another couple of episodes with this, uh, but um, actually we're going to have probably one more episode in the series, I, I, and these have been really fun, so yeah. probably maybe, maybe even over a hangout sometime, I'll have to get okay. Michelle back on again. But uh, yes, so uh, hang around and we've got some more episodes coming up.